His was a life larger than most could imagine, and adding irresistible intrigue to the man was the enigma he created when he shut himself off from the rest of the world. In the last years of his life, overcome by his eccentricities, Hughes became a notorious recluse, and where most saw it as the sad demise of a once mighty tycoon, a few saw it as an opportunity to make a fortune. In 1970, Clifford Irving met with his friend Richard Susskind. Both were authors, and together they came up with an idea to write the autobiography of Howard Hughes. Because Hughes was so reclusive, they didn't expect he'd make any fuss. A few forged signatures and letters later, he had a deal with powerhouse publisher McGraw-Hill. To complete the scheme, Irving's wife, Edith, opened a Swiss bank account under the name Helga R. Hughes. So when McGraw-Hill wrote a $765,000 check to H.R. Hughes, intended for Howard R. Hughes, they were in fact paying Mr. and Mrs. Irving. For a while, the hoax held up. But by early 1972, it started to come apart at the seams. Earlier this week, with his wife Edith at his side, Irving was interviewed at his island home in Spain. Correspondent Bill McLaughlin asked Irving then if he knew the identity of the Helga R. Hughes who held the Swiss account. Well, it's obviously a mystery, and I can't pretend that I understand all of it. There have been so many reports and rumors and accusations and threats. In the last week, that it's impossible to say what really happened. It's really impossible to say what's going to happen. I've had reports about this woman, <clears throat> that, that she was in her, a blonde in her early 30s. She then changed to a dark-haired woman in her late 40s. Uh, and she now seems to be a blonde in her 30s, resembling my wife. Irving held out as long as he could, but pressure was mounting quickly. His lies were beginning to fold underneath him. And before long, he was left with no other choice but to admit to the truth. Uh, what Mr. Irving wanted to tell the district attorney's office, and did tell them, was that uh, his wife actually opened the account in... Uh, you mean the account, the account where the, the checks from a Broad Hill were deposited? Yes. Well, well, the name of the one that argued she yes, opened it, so correct. she was, in fact, for what purpose did she open it with another name? I believe uh, that uh, it was opened in H in uh, HRU's name, that's correct, and... Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not why, did, why did Mrs. Irving use the name H.R. Hughes? I haven't interviewed Mrs. Uh, Mr. Irving. Irving, his wife, and Richard Susskind were later all indicted on charges of fraud. What they would do, according to the indictment, is that they would sit down uh, in Ibiza with tape recordings, and one day Mr. Susskind would pretend that he was Howard Hughes, and the next day Mr. Irving would pretend that he was Howard Hughes, and they would ask each other questions, and they would answer those questions to make it look like they were really having a conversation with Mr. Hughes. In June of 1972, all three defendants pled guilty and were sentenced to prison terms. Did you ever think and you did? Never, never. For, you know, and I think also Cliff didn't in the beginning. I think it, it started as a joke, as an idea. But as they well knew, that's not how it ended. Well, prison is a nice place to visit, but I don't want to live there. Do you owe anybody any money at this point? Yes, I owe. Uh, a total of about uh, just under $1 million to the IRS, to McGraw Hill, and to my various attorneys. How do you think you're going to pay that offer, are you? Slowly. <laughs> After 17 months on February 14th, 1974, Clifford Irving was released from prison. And even though he didn't act alone, he became the face of the Howard Hughes hoax. It was fame and fortune he was after, but it was infamy and disrepute that he would walk away with.